not in the, that when I say my orientation towards the future has changed, it doesn't feel like it's, it's an expansive or, um, like, ha, you know, it kind of feels like it's, and, um, I don't really know, uh, I don't really know why. That's super um, interesting. We have yeah. a, with April, I developed a, <clears throat> a sort of a stretch of the, that she gives in some talks now about our orientation to the future. And like, do we see it in front of us or behind us or beside us threatening? And if it's ahead of us, is it a hole we're going to fall into maybe? Or is it an aspirational thing up high? And and then with what speed are we approaching it? Is it disorienting or whatever? There's a whole bunch of, once you start trying to just metaphorically um, place the future somewhere around you, it gets interesting because you're like, I'm just trying to skirt the future and avoid it is 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 like a, it's a strategy. Mm -hmm. um, but that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I feel the same way for maybe um, articulating it is the, there, is a, a, there is a growing recognition, you know, that the environment is starting to run away from us and that the, there is a, an, an exponential acceleration in, uh, in the damage that uh, is being caused by a shifting, changing climate. And uh, when you go on LinkedIn, at, at least the, the, the group that I'm connected with, I mean, they are increasingly alarming uh um data points you know that uh, show how uh, serious this is really getting and at the same time you see this um intensifying pushback by the industry um and particularly in the farm bill discussions who don't want to have change they don't want to lose their uh, their privileged market access they don't want to lose the government subsidies that they have been, you know, feeding on, um, and and so to me, this the insanity that you see in the house is really a reflection on um, uh, creating as much strife and turmoil to paralyze the political process that would create change. So it's a it's a it's an insane time, you know, because we are. In, in a vortex right now where every every move that's being made at the national level has really severe consequences um and yeah so yeah what do you do about it but uh um yeah it's getting it's getting i mean you know look at the weather map you know look at the heat wave going through the south south uh, east uh, state it's, right it's, now it's spreading yeah, and and so you know you already have storms piling up uh, uh, that uh, in June that that is a very very rare occurrence. So, I mean, it is what it is. You know, it, it's just the, the the sad thing is that we completely lack the uh, um, collective understanding of where we're at and what we could be doing about it, and that's really. Uh, this this kind of uh, aggressive uh, disagreement is is a is a huge problem. Um, it's it's interesting. You just made me um, as as you were talking. I was thinking about these pain scale charts, which is like when my mom went to hospital, they handed her a sheet just in case you can't describe it. But also, if they, if they say how how much pain are you having, one to ten, we don't all know we mean the same thing by one to ten. So it's like. Four means you can't get this pain out of your head and it's interrupting and I'm making up what this means, uh, but but they graduate, right? And and 10 is it's unbearable that there's nothing else I can, I can do. Um, but I'm wondering if there is a damage to the earth chart we could create that's parallel to that and present that to people and say, because there's a lot of people that are like, you know, humans have always done stuff to the earth. The earth has this incredible ability to heal. We're going to get over this. It'll be okay. And all these worries about there have always been ice ages. There, there's countless excuses for there's nothing abnormal going on. And, and I was in a conversation recently where it was like, how bad is it? And I was like, you know, I think it's this bad. And this is this is my biggest worry about why it's that bad, right? But if we had a chart that had like like different levels of, of possible damage that is currently underway, that might be an interesting way either 
to start conversations and to head into why do you think this and how does it go, or also to sort people who think there's just no problem going on and people who are thinking that we are entering an extinction level event. Then, and, and I'll, I'll just add to that the little thought that the little thought that it takes a lot to do extinction. Like like extinction level events are in, extremely major, um, and so there's a bunch of people out there saying we're about to destroy all life, and it's like that's that's really a hard task. That's a hard thing to do, um, but there's ways in which life you know life supporting systems could collapse and and then then you do get something like that anyway this is a distraction a, a bit of a distraction but i don't know if you you either of you think that would be interesting or useful i i uh, that idea appeals to me because of the uh um the word coming to mind or the words coming to mind are like household context, providing some kind of context that like, you know, that everyone's seen that chart, at least in, in the United States, um, everyone's familiar with that chart and most are familiar with that chart. And uh, that would be a really easy and like really simplified way to bring this very, um, what I perceive to be a very um, complex and um, uh, paralyzing idea into a small kind of cute, cute framework that is easy to understand that people can relate to. And they already have a place for that in their mind. And we're just attaching this other complicated thing onto a simple already existing framework that a lot of people have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a cool idea. Very interesting. Um, Klaus, do you want to check in or shall I? Um, no, go ahead, go ahead and get started, Jay. Sure. Um, so as usual, I'm doing way too many things and everything that I do sort of seems to sprout new things. Um, my The good news is that a lot of the things I care about seem to fit together nicely. So, so this Neo book is a nice way of weaving. How do we make sense of things together? How do we publish those into the world? How do they connect into deeper artifacts? So, so um, that works really well. Um, I'm, I'm sort of deep into what is the future? What does our cyborg future look like? Because I'm working on this conjecture that the future of work is very cyborg. We are going, and I, by which I don't mean implants and biological prostheses, but I, I mean just much deeper integration with software. That we are going to rely more on software. Software is going to have more to do with us and how we live. Software is going to eat a lot of work and improve a lot of work. All the kind, all those kinds of things. And, and Klaus, just from all of your reporting in on chat, your use of ChatGPT, it's a perfect example of of you know, how that might work. Um, and one of the things that's sprouting out of that quest, on the one hand, I'd like to like make a living giving speeches about this. But on the other hand, I think that there's room for, or maybe demand for, but I don't know, a community of practice of ethical cyborgs. Meaning a group of people who get together and talk about what the cyborg future means, but also who are concerned about and working toward principles, activities, actions, training, whatever else it might be, so that as we gain these superpowers, we use them for good and not for evil. And that may be just too simplistic to say, but that but that's a piece of what I'm I'm, I'm working on. And I've got a, a call with a guy who lives in, in Melbourne, Australia, uh, once a week where we're sort of chewing on this. Um, and I may I may be doing more stuff around, or, you know, I may be offering a platform or something like that around that. But I don't know if, does that Sound like a need or not a need or go ahead. Do I can it ref, uh, reflect that back to you to make sure I understood what, what you were heard what you were saying? Please. So it sounded like um so it sounded like uh you you feel an interest in creating some kind of replicable uh ethical framework for or framework for ethical software use. And as this, as we know, we as humans become more uh, deeply involved with and uh, integrated with software or vice versa, there, there's some kind of standing set of standards or ethics that the framework that people can refer to individually to support them in their use or at, at what level is uh, this framework getting deployed? And do I even have the right idea what I'm saying, suggesting you're suggesting a framework, ethical framework? Um, so yes, on ethical framework, and I think you're on the right track. I don't know that I want to stand up a community or the community to create that framework. Mm -hmm. I think I'm interested in whether there's a community of practice that goes and looks at other people's frameworks and figures out which ones work mm -hmm. and which ones don't and adapts and appropriates them and then adopts them and promulgates them basically. And, and, and so, so I don't, I don't, I, I think it's way above my pay grade to go develop a really good framework like that. 
Um, but there's a bunch of people out there trying to do this in different ways. And some of those are going to be excellent. And some of those are going to be a little, a little um, loose. So I think I'm interested in the community more than the developing the framework. And then I think this community would also be about learning how to use the tools better, um, building projects around the tools, doing other practical stuff that a, that a community of cyborgs might want to do. And a little bit I'm thinking here about how programming has become such a major employer over the last 50 years, right? It used to be there were some COBOL program programmers and some Fortran programmers. And now it's like, you're in high school and one of the big paths forward is go learn to code, mm -hmm. uh, which may or may not get automated or go away. But we have a lot of programmers in the field right now who don't particularly have any ethics training, any ethical framework, any ethical responsibilities, any professional oversight, any, any of those th sorts of things. Like none of that exists. And it feels to me like, these superpower tools could use that. And they could use a community that knows what that means and how to apply that. So that's kind of where I'm coming at it from. And it's more the community than the particular frameworks which need to be developed sort of between lots of different communities and people who are like expert at doing those things, I think. Thank you, that helps. Cool. So what, what uh, has been striking me for the last maybe a couple of weeks of so starting to really get into this chat GPT thing and, and trying to elicit uh, responses that are useful you know, to, to get some logic flow into a book format. Right? The, the, what's, what seems to be happening is that uh, Lovelock, for example, is his book in the Nova scene, and but also you know, others linking into this are suggesting uh, almost like a partnership with your uh, AI, whichever whichever one you you pick. Uh, Chat GPT. I mean, that's what I've been going with. I tried Bard, and that doesn't really flow as easy. Um, and going forward, um, I mean, a couple of things. One is that uh, the artificial intelligence needs us to survive and first of all, to form itself and then to, to survive. There is a, there is a stop gap in the uh, biosphere that if the planet uh, exceeds, I think 50 degrees, there is no, then, then it, it turns into a desert. Uh, there is no more life. And there is also no ability for, uh, for, uh, um, mechanical life to succeed now yeah. so so the, the the planet needs to stay habitable and the habitability of the planet is strictly organic right? the entire biosphere everything is organic and i think about you now all the gases that are uh, in the atmosphere that generated through organic uh, processes so so there is this interdependency so that's a good thing because ai needs humanity but it needs humanity acting in certain ways that doesn't damage the biosphere, right? Mm -hmm. so, so there is there is a symbiotic relationship in that in that context. So I think, and, and then so more and more it becomes clear that we have to change our way of thinking. In in that we don't solve problems, we ask questions, you know, to towards problems that need to be solved. So the the skill is in the identification of what you need to know to move forward and then and then learn to ask questions in ways that solicits what you need to know uh, to to guide your 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 next steps and your actions yeah. um so and so you already see this shifting and you see and we had a, i think ken was uh uh getting you know, I'm sort of nervous about the idea that children grow up with AI because what is this going to do to their emotional development and so on? Well, my daughter has you know, three little girls, one, three, and five years old, and she's already full into it, you know, because you got, I mean, she, you know, she's, uh, all three kids are in the Jewish Community Center in Nashville, and I mean that is just an incredible school. Wow! You know, starting at H one, I kid you not, they have a classroom for for one year old kids. You know, you know, with with one teacher in it. 
And so they're using every tool that is available. You know, um, Khan Academy is already embracing AI to create uh, the students tailored, individually tailored learning programs that match the, the students' uh, preference, preferential style of learning, right? Attention span and so on and so on. So, so it's happening, you know, that the, this next generation growing up will, um, will live with AI. Um, and, and so, so then you want to make that interaction productive and, and, and positive, you know? Um, and, and so I have had now some conversations with chat GPT where in one, in one instance, I asked chat GPT, why did you not consider, um, I mean, for example, about meat, right? I mean, you're offering all these, uh, techno solutions. Why don't you offer a solution that would tie into cuisines around the world that use much less meat than we do, like India, you know, or the Mediterranean cuisine. And chat GPT comes, I apologize for overlooking that. You know, I mean, it was just, it's just, uh, crazy stuff, you know, and, and so uh, then it, re, it, it reconfigured its response based on including this fact. So you're also teaching AI, you know, to think in ways that, uh, that we as humans do and, and expand, you know, that frame of reference. Um, so, so yeah, so I, I think for, for the immediate time and maybe for the next few years, um we will be we will be learning to use uh, ai in ways that amplifies you know, our thought process and and takes away all the tedious work because we used to when you wrote a paper i mean you spend 90 percent of your time in research and 10 percent in writing you know? so now you can spend 90 percent of your time writing and 10 percent asking questions of stuff you need to know uh, and and so that that is that is amplifying, you know, uh, uh, just supercharging you know, our ability to pull together thoughts. And mm -hmm. so I wanted to to you know, to to refer to to one paper that came out recently, which didn't reference AI, but I'm I, I'm sure they used AI to write this thing. And let me just grab the screen for a moment. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's this you know you have a, a paper that uh, I'm sure you have seen right it's the the great unraveling the great unraveling yeah um, where is it here let me just go up and um, navigating the polar crisis and the way they went about it is that um, let me see the the polar crisis defined. Um, so they go into the, the origins of our predicament here. But what they do is they take a text um, where, where, they, where they line up individual items, you know, stratosphere or the climate change, land system change, and so on. So they, they create, they create um, a headline you know, that, that gives you the the picture there, but then they go into how do you page this down? This thing, then they go into hold on, it's just messed me up. I think you're in a screen capture mode or something like that because your cursor is square. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. And you're clicking on those pages and it's not going. There we go. Yeah, okay, I have to click over here. Yeah, um, where was it? Overview, what did I just have? Hold on. Yeah, it, it's it oh. just doesn't want to let me page down one page at a time. Can you hit the space bar? Does that take you down a space a page at a time? No. Hmm. Um, it just messes me. Yeah, no, it just doesn't want to do it. Hmm. So where was I? Hold well, on here. Um, there. Okay, so so here's this page, right? And then it goes into okay. So here's global warming, right? So you can actually work with. AI with ChatGPT, where where you ask it to create, you know, or you pick up a chart like this from somewhere, um, and because there, are, you know, all of this stuff is out there, 
And then you ask ChatGPT, okay, so let's now go into global into global warming. Um, and then he has biodiversity and habitat loss, soil loss and degradation. So here are uh, here are then line items defined. Yeah? And so you can really create uh, a book going into going from headlines down to these individual uh, uh, line items and then drive this topic further down. So you can actually, I think you can write a book fairly fast, you know, by using this, this process here. Um, so when I, when we go into um, where we are so far with our book here, where did I put, okay, so the story of soil. So this, this, this is what, um, out of all the, the prompts that I went through, um, what I have extracted may be, may be most useful. So there is this, you know, the, the, there is this headline, the story of soil, sort of a historical perspective, uh, age of generation. And then from there, um, we, I, 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 now why we need a revolt. See, now comes Chat GPC originated. Okay, there's a health crisis, environmental degradation, loss of biodiversity, social justice. So now we could take crap each one of these line items and make and make and create the next paragraph or the next chapter out of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, and then and again here, food production must consume. It's a here's another top line article, and then. Uh, you must consider local conditions for food production. There's climate environment, water, soil health, pest and disease. Now, so you, you got a, you, 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 we can break that down again into these seven sub chapters. And then we go into bioregions. What are they? Uh, culture and traditions. And then the regenerative movement is how do you repair this now? And then, uh, and then we have again, uh, you know, six sub items here that we can break down. And then here's the path to the regenerative future, raise awareness, foster collaboration, and so on. So we actually have the headline for a book that we could assemble from, from, from where we are so far. Um, that's great. Is that the same document that you had before, the story of soil, or is this a whole new document you created? Uh, it, it's it's no it's the I, me, I messed with this a little bit. So I, I I think I only have a link to draft 1.0 because that's the link that I just clicked on and it takes me to 1.0. So if you can sh if you don't mind sharing a link to this one, I will add it to my brain and it's a much it's a it's as much more fleshed out than what I saw before. So uh, great work. Yeah. So if if we you know if we could look through this. Um, and and uh, and then we can expand this you know, into a small book. Um, and, and actually, I got the, the, the reason. I mean, I could, what stimulated me is to look at this. Welcome to the great unraveling, because it just looks uh, amazingly uh, 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 similar to the way ChatGPT responds to your questions. Mm -hmm. You know, it 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 uh, it repeats it and it goes bing 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 here are the key points uh, and then you can just grab that point and create a sub point fleshed out and and elaborated um cool thank and also thank you for bringing us right back into our topic um so nicely um I, because partly by by way of sort of checking in or arranging where we are i wanted to ask you klaus um, the draft you just showed us looks like where I was thinking of, we were heading for a neo book a starting point. But then there's these plays, and you said there's a second teacher is interested in doing that. How do the plays fit with the book? Fit into the project in your in your mind? I would say that's that's a spin off. Um, okay, it actually distracted me. I must say because of it, it was super you know, great idea. So I, I played with it and and I developed uh, I, I um, developed the outline a play outline and so on and so on. But then I'm going to come back to here's the book. Yeah. Okay, um, so that's I think we're we're totally aligned here. And once we get a quick first book done, and it doesn't so 
I think we need to figure out how much more do, does each of these levels need to expand. Like you just pointed out, you know, several lists that are in the draft. Uh, any one of those items could become uh, a couple pages or whatever else, and, and that's probably really good for most of them. But if we do that for all of them, that might turn into too long or too big a project. So I think I think deciding how much what what should be expended a lot and what not is really useful. Um, um, and then I love that sort of the last section is regenerative agriculture and what what does it do and how does it work. Um, there's probably some piece at the end there that that needs to bring in bioregions again because it was a uh, well there, there was the piece you showed about um, how to go about doing this and why so much of this is local and dependent on local conditions, which is great. Uh, but it, what you what you've shown is a very nice, I think, starting point for the book. Um, Patty, any thoughts? Any? No, no, I'm just I'm just um, scrolling down through the the second draft and picking through it. This looks fantastic. Yeah, this looks great. Yeah, it's like, like well filled out. Um, cool. So, I think a couple of questions like what's missing from the draft. What 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 would any of us like to see included? Um, how might we want to sort of divide and conquer? Um, Klaus, what is your plan with this right away? Uh, what is what criteria are sufficient for a quick first book? Like at what point do we know that we're more or less complete? And then we like send the bat signal up on the clouds for Pete to come back and uh, help us like turn this into an actual e EPUB document, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I was just uh, the, the last couple of days you know, struggling to, to pull this together because when you when you look at um, where is it uh, when you when you look at hold on let me just uh, get back to the screen here um, these are all this these are all the stories that we currently have mm -hmm. yeah. um, so here's the here's the play and this the story of soil and the story of Greenville so so these these are um, um, all the things we currently have. So I did uh, pull together this. This is now uh, what what now I would move forward with is the story of soil and bioregions. Um, yeah. So I would say, um, you know, just continue to flesh this out. Um, I'm going to be um, at the Blues Festival next Monday <laughs> in Portland. Oh, here, and, cool. Yeah, and you got this is a most phenomenal blues festival, one of the top two or three uh, in the country. Good lord, I don't even I pay attention enough to that. Yeah, I mean this is yeah you need to I mean check it out. Um, so I won't be able to to do anything. So next week I'll be out. I'll be uh, underneath a beer tent listening to blues. You know? um, but but I would say that's and then then. <laughs> um, it would be great to have a creative component in there. You know, if uh, we can insert some some pictures, some drawings now, and and so on, and that's what I'm not really good at. Um, but that's just to loosen this thing up a little bit, and and uh, you know, just create some visual uh, uh, breaking points and so on. Yeah. I think I think once. I think once this thing is a little bit further than it is now, and, and we're all sort of checked off on it and happy with it, we could recruit somebody and say, hey, who's really good at prompts and you know, uh, prompting generative AI art and create a series of, of illustrations that are all of a same style genre, but explain or illustrate the different parts of what we're trying to say. That would be terrific. Um, and I, I bet that if we sort of knock on a couple of people's doors, we can find somebody who will uh, pass us some really nice illustrations because that seems to be so possible right now. Um, so that would be great. Um, and, and if you have any spare time while you're in town, I'd love to get together and meet you in person and have a beer or something. But uh, yeah. let, let me know if you have any wiggle room in your schedule. I, I don't have a car. It's the only thing because we, we are driving with, with someone else. I mean, uh -huh. we're passengers. But yeah, if you can, we can meet up in the area down there. Sure. I don't. I don't know. Where is the blues festival being held? On the waterfront. Oh, I, I'm. I'm walking distance from the waterfront. Hey, McCormick Schmicks somewhere. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. There is one right down there on the waterfront. Yeah. Um, that sounds great. So uh, let me know when, because yeah, you'll have schedule with friends and family and all that. Let me know when it's good. And I would love to just come come by and visit for a beer or a dinner or something. I don't know. Okay. Um, that'd be fabulous. It'd be really nice to meet you. Um, cool. That makes me happy. Oh, and then, uh, but but worse luck for the project is that I'm going to be missing the next two Mondays uh, because on the 8th, April and I travel to Baja for a workshop that is the, the whole week of the 10th. So that includes Monday the 10th. And then we're staying in Baja for an extra couple of days. So the 17th, I'm also missing in action. So it's 17, 18, 19. We return home late on Wednesday, the 19th of July. Uh, so it looks like our next three uh, weeks are, um, are um, how shall I say it, <laughs> um, endangered a little bit. Uh, and what we could do is we could just take a break and reconvene, or we could split up and whoever is on the calls can just move things forward any way we want, uh, whatever we'd like to do. I don't, I don't know how you all feel. I'm going to be camping on the 24th and 31st. <laughs> so. uh, the, the following Mondays? Yeah. Oh, man. All right. I, I'm okay with the summer break, summer vacation. From uh, you know, I think I think maybe leaving today with a clear sense of what we're working on for the next month or however many weeks we're going to be not adjourning, could be fine. But we can also you know work on email and and uh, mm -hmm. and exchange you know some thoughts and and see how this advances. And we also have the the Mattermost channel for the project, mm -hmm. so what we can do is use that to talk back and forth, so that anybody else who's interested can come see what we're saying. I, th I think that talking a little bit more in public would be good. Uh, just so that anybody who wants to can can catch up with us and join us if they want to. Um, so let's so let's post a couple of things there, maybe including a link to the the draft document uh, that you just shared with us. I, I put that one on the Mattermost already. Oh, fabulous! Okay, I must have missed it. I don't think I've caught up for a couple of days. Um, that's great, and um, good. So that means that the next little piece we have here is our last one for a bit in person uh, in real time. How should we use this time most effectively to um, organize ourselves for the next month or two uh, to make some progress? Well, I would love to be, be the play really resonated. And there is apparently a church group. It's called the Green Team or something like, the, uh, like this. And they are doing Sunday school um, uh, teach-ins you know, to engage children into environmental issues. Um, so now we, we found we have two or two teach, actually have three in total, um, who, who are interested in doing something and making a play out of this. Um, and I mean, this is just not, you know, my, my I mean, I don't know, know anything about how to write a play or organize a play. But that would be, uh, I think, worthwhile pursuing, you know, to, to, uh, um, you know, Patty, I mean, if we could do like a marketing outreach to church groups um, and uh, um, maybe just, you know, find, find uh, connecting points where we can make this uh, interesting, make, make this available. Then we should package it already somewhat, and we would need Pete, you know, to to put a bow around it, um, but uh, but link it up as a as a play that we suggest, and that we would love for uh, Sunday schools you know, to to advance for some is, for children. You know. Is the play finished enough to be in the position for us to market it? Is it something that they're done and, and using already? Uh, well, they are you know, the groups that that we have there are using it, um, and they were actually um, there. There's the, there's one one the, the Thomas I think is his name. He wanted to write something completely different, but uh, so here's what this looks like: the choice and source of soil, mm -hmm. um, and it suggests. You know, a uh, a play, a battle for survival, um, and, an, and an array of hopes. So it has four acts. Um, 
And the lead in story is would be this one here, you now the story of soil. Um, I think we had hold on that there was something simpler than that. Mm -hmm. uh, what, let me what, see. Gra what grade level, what age group is this aimed for? Uh, this uh, uh, this first one is for small kids because it looks more complicated than I would think small kids would be able to absorb, but I am no teacher or author of children's plays. So, so I look at the outline you just showed us and I'm like, that is pretty complicated for like a first grader, let's say, or a second grader. Yeah, it's, it's this, this is sort of middle school level. Okay. Okay. So middle school is very different then. Yeah. And so the, the, the um, uh, lady in Kansas, she's downsizing it for little kids. But okay. she's actually she's saying they are go, they're only going to use three children and then insert adults into the play. Okay. So I don't know if they, what they're coming up with. Yeah. You know? Got that. Who wants this to be is, the earthworm? I want to be the earthworm. That's right. <laughs> so this is the lead in story, the choice and soul of soil. Here's the story of joy, and here's the story of soul. Mm. And so that's the lead in, and then from there we come into the title of the play. Mm -hmm. You know, so so that so it translates then. So those are the two files uh, that we would need to package up. You know, so the choice and so of soil is a lead in, and then here is a, is a suggested outline for the for the play. Feel free to modify it any which way you want, and if you need um, more research or more uh, you no know, specific questions, call us and we'll see what we can work out. So you're saying that this is in a state to get basically propagated and for us to do to, to to tell more people about it so that other schools might pick up or other churches might pick up on it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I would I, I mean if if Pete can can wrap something around it, you know, make this look uh, put in little booklet form and so on, I could go back to the Sierra Club and say, look, we advanced this a little bit more. We already have a couple of churches working on it. Anybody else interested in picking this up? No, and and uh, you know, Patty, maybe you you can uh, do a marketing outreach and see where else that could be promoted. Um, I mean, it's free, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, I assume, uh, uh, Jerry, I don't know how you want to go about it, but uh, we could have this license that we talked mm -hmm. about um, that uh, it, it puts the the uh, rights back to us but you know it allows others to use it but please give us the credit for it you know? right right and i'm all in favor of open source and stuff uh, but we may want to charge a nominal fee for the for a, a pdf sold through amazon or and amazon may not i don't know if they just uh if they will host things that are completely free i, I i've never asked about that mm -hmm. If there's no if there's no charge on purpose for a document, will Amazon still sort of sell that? Patty, yeah. you, I think you were going to ask something or say something. Oh, yeah, thanks. Uh, I was just going to um, say if for the marketing outreach piece, it'd be helpful for me to have a sense of um, um, what um, what would those conversations not just look like, but when what what is the when do I like wash my hands clean of the conversation? You know, how do I, how do I know that what we're trying to do has been done? Is it just conversations with churches and um, Sunday schools and trying to feel out like, Hey, is this something you're looking for? I would, you know, like to have more conversation around what you think that could look like. And. We'll write a comment that. then. Uh, or we'll do, we'll do um, some kind of a one page introduction. Okay. Um, and put some, put some, creative you know, uh, artwork around it mm -hmm. um, that shows it's directed towards children. So mm -hmm. to graphically speak to children. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and then uh, uh, direct it at, uh, at various church groups. I would just look up mm -hmm. headquarters of churches, mm -hmm. um, you know, because they, they are pretty, pretty organized in, in that they, for Sunday schools, for example, they have pretty structured Sunday school teachers and programs and so on. Mm -hmm. um, so if you go to uh, evangelicals or you know, the independent churches and say, you know, we have this play here, would you be interested um, in, in, uh, in, in using that for your school program? Yeah. 
aren't um dude and i could be wildly off base about this don't aren't churches aren't there they're not church chains are there i'm just i'm just thinking of there's like grace church which i know has that's that's uh that's an established that's not just here in this area i know there's grace churches all over the state are there some is there some kind of central hub among these that can't be called church chains or well, they're just called they're, they're denominate they're denominations that's for right. sure okay right right so, so you but, have like southern baptists which split recently mm-hmm. into a more conservative group and a more uh, liberal group oh. but there's lots and lots of denominations out there and mm-hmm. that they sort of act as change there are some churches that are very affiliated and almost behave like franchises mm-hmm. and there are other churches that are just really independent and they happen to you know use the same documents and, and the same okay. liturgy or whatever yeah yeah and some of them are very progressive, yeah. um, you know. And some of them are like uh, 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 MAGA headquarters. You know? so yeah, I, I have a feeling that one of the things we should do is figure out. Um, I think green green evangelicals are a place to start, and to figure out where are those people speaking and how do they speak? Because I have a funny feeling that the language and imagery of the movement. Is very specific to the movement and the, and that thing. And if we can if we show up and we use progressive lefty eco uh, wrapping for this play, and then show up and say with great intentions, "Hey, here's a free play. Use it." They might all be like, "Yeah, that looks like something Antifa would hand us." Mm-hmm. Um, but if we can sort of learn to speak their language and look like look like their materials, and yet be progressive within that framework. We might actually get a whole lot of traction because they're like, oh, this looks friendly. Let's put it in the system along with whatever other resources we have. But but we don't, we're, we're completely ignorant at this point about what the eco techno socio ecosystem of green religious folks looks like. And, and just a couple conversations will probably enlighten us a whole great deal about that. Yeah. And, and, uh, what what I have learned um, you know, over the last few years, when you reach out to groups like this, it is much more effective to talk about water, you know, because everybody is concerned about water um, than climate change. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Climate change is too abstract a concept, but the the and and we can we can frame that uh, in the introduction letter, you know. For example, did you know that one percent of organic matter or of, of life inside the soil, or one one percent of increase in soil organic matter uh, uh, has the soil hold an additional twenty thousand gallons of water per acre. So uh, I, I was mentioning I had a meeting with Tim Knob, you know, here in the state senate mm-hmm. about the about the soil health bill that's pending in Oregon. And he had a young man, his staffer, you know, is also a small scale farmer. And we had a farmer on the team and he was saying, I, I have achieved 5% uh, soil organic content in my, you know, in my land. And I said, that means that your soil can hold 100,000 gallons of water per acre. And it just blew them away. Because, you know, the people don't know that. And so when we bring in something like this and we point out the relationship between soil and water, and how important it is for soil to have these little buckets inside, you know, these worms and these microorganisms and all that, because that then defines, that then drives the capacity of the soil to stimulate the local rain cycle, you know, the local water cycle, and so on and so on. Um, so we don't even need to say climate change at all. You know? And that that's in the so even with conservative church groups. You know, you 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 don't run into that uh, reflexive pushback. Yep, and that that's very much what I was talking about in the sense of framing, tone, language, all that, and and that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Jerry, you mentioned there's the Green Evangelical Movement that you you know is is already on this beat. Do we know of any other um, churches or denominations that are generally open to friendly this cause or are um, spending time and energy? inserting themselves into the cause, interacting with this cause, um, aside from the green evangelical? No yeah. idea. Yeah. I have I have no idea. Klaus, I don't know if you have any any finer sort of finer descriptions of these groups. No, I think I would just just go online um and uh and I mean one simple search, you know, should yield yeah. um, major just like major denominations in North America major religious denominations in North America, 
and then then grab them one by one and find out where's the headquarter located. It might also be interesting just to ask ChatGPT which religious denomination denominations in the mm -hmm. U.S. are interested in Earth, uh, soil fertility, um, agriculture, water, any of those kinds of issues, and that might that might cough up a list of places to start. Yeah. Okay. Are you up for it? For the marketing campaign? Uh-huh. I can help. Yeah. Okay. I can um I can I can try putting together some kind of uh, would be a PDF, uh, a one page um cover for the yeah. Um uh, another thing that would be really useful would be to be written up in some publication that the people in those communities care about, right? Mm. Probably a newsletter or a podcast. Definitely, yeah. Um, and maybe like Klaus booking you in as a guest on a podcast, along with one of the teachers who's already, you know, cr created this as a, uh, as a play, like having the two of you as guests on a podcast for uh, these movements within their den denominations would be fantastic. Yeah, that would get a lot of attention. Off the off the cuff, I'm already um, where my brain is going is where can we maximize Klaus? If, if that's something you move forward with Klaus, something like interviews and being present in these spaces, how can we move forward in the spaces that are going to get more um, viewership, listenership, and maybe aren't like the, the niche, niche pockets of the, of the population we're trying to work with. And I don't, I don't know what it would look like to, to find that again. What are these hubs? Are there hubs within these denominations or churches that we can approach first and be more efficient with our time in that way and maybe that's not the aim what how does that sound to you guys yeah i i would say um we if we make this flyer uh, generic enough uh mm -hmm. and this is why the soil and water uh, reference you know is gives is giving you just a great entry everybody's worried about water you know mm -hmm. it doesn't matter whether you're in kansas or florida or california mm -hmm. everybody is aware that water is an issue so by by bringing in this connection, you know, of of soil uh, soil uh, um, um, that is that is not healthy is disrupting the water cycle actually, you know. So but so soil needs to be healthy to to hang on to water, you know, and and support the this what is called the small water cycle. But the storage of water, I mean, I was. In a, in a discussion in California, you know, with the farmers group there who were complaining uh, uh, about wanting the state to invest billions of dollars for water capture uh, uh, ideas. And I said, why don't you just increase your soil content, your organic content in the soil by 1% and you will be able to hang on to 14 million uh, acre feet of water. And I mean, that, that's, you know, so, so these, just even farmers who have been in the business for a long time haven't made that connection you know, mm -hmm. between the water holding capacity of the soil. So if we do something generic enough, then we can just mass, mass mail this out. We don't have to be too concerned uh, about customizing the message. You know? my, my question, Klaus, would be, and, and maybe there isn't a simple answer for this, but can you help me understand how knowing that, so let's say I'm, I'm, I'm learning this for the first time, right? I'm in, I'm in my community, I hear this message, and is, is that, um, where is there actionable, where can I take action knowing that, the, 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 what you just explained, how increasing the organic content of soil by 1% um, allows that square acreage to hold so many thousands of gallons more water? Um, like, okay, so I hear that, what can I do? knowing that to create change in my community is 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 there a way forward in that way and if we can i'm just thinking like the sticking power of that idea might be a little stronger if we have actionable ways for people to um not just just understand that knowledge but to to, to just do something with it but all right so as part of the play we have act four the okay. way of hope you know, and so this, that's restoration. So the synopsis, amidst the soul, a glimmer of hope emerges. Mm -hmm. So it encounters pollinators whose presence ignites a spark of life. You know, um, the introduction of sustainable practices offer a solution. And together with soil, they embark on a journey to restore balance and harmony. Don't forget the mycelium. What's that? Don't forget the mycelium. The <laughs> mycelium, that's right. 
so important. So the, the dialogue should so so because we don't want to overcomplicate this now mm -hmm. the the uh, this is because this is you now middle school right? so at the most but now you introduce the idea of sustainable practices okay and and a church can then pick we can now create another one saying what are these sustainable practices now and and but then that gets really complex now mm -hmm. okay. um, but then but what we can do is we can add a discussion guide to this. Mm. So the church, so after the play, you know, then we, then, then, uh, uh, we can take, we can encourage the, the group to engage the audience in the discussion, in a Q&A. And in that Q&A, then we can say, okay, so here's what that would look like. Yeah. So Patty, were you also asking whether there should be a website for this project so that we can route people to that can say, if you're interested, look here, go here, do this? I wasn't suggesting that. But that's a great suggestion. Yeah, that's oh. a, I like that idea. Yeah, no, that wasn't. Uh, that that could be that could be an avenue for that action taking. You know, if you want to learn more, go here. It um, would be very simple to stand the simple one up. Uh, more elaborate is a lot of work, but a very simple website with a UR, memorable URL and all that is like unbelievably easy to, to do so we could do that and then we could host resources on it that say watch these three watch these three videos uh here's two good books and here's a community that's talking about all this you can join that that's a lot i mean yeah. if we if we sort through the the resources available intelligently and give them a few really juicy links that's that's of, of good value to lots of people yeah it doesn't have to be uh, complex but I mean, for example, we could add an article. There's a little, I have uh, on, on my uh, PowerPoints, I have one page that's, that has a little picture in there. 1% of organic matter adds 20,000 gallons of water per acre. Mm -hmm. right? And then you can click on this and it gets you to the article that explains this. Yeah, that kind of thing. I, I wonder, and it could be that it's already present, I'm just missing it. I wonder if there's some way we can, um close this um what to me could feel like an abstract loop for someone to understand how does this knowledge fit into my life um you know how how would you know i heard you say there's you know there's much more concern for water and a little bit more relatability to the threat to water than this like really broad um, abstract idea of climate change for some um so what could is there something a uh, uh, a statistic a not a fear fact you know but something kind of coming down the pipeline uh, that if this remains unchecked, if this continues to um, move in the direction it's moving, like these people will lose something. Like, you know, how, how can we relate this idea to their immediate imminent future? Could that be beneficial? Do we not need that? Are we not looking for that here? Are we just looking to introduce the idea? And that's good. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I'm just, I'm just thinking what... Uh... What could I uh, um, let me just take a look. Yeah. And tying that back around to, to Jerry's idea of the um, illustrated paint chart, you know, I wonder if if there could be like really, it would be probably oversimplified, but you know, if we get to level seven frowny face, you know, what would that, what are the um, consequences that align with earth getting to level seven frowny face and all the way down, all the way up the scale? And again, that's that's might be unrealistic and also um, not helpful because that'd be too simplified for what might be trying to be captured. But you know, the in in the face of something so abstract and so scary, maybe so simplification he, could be. Yeah, here's a PowerPoint that I just used uh, for the climate reality call. Um, and uh, so that that I mean uh, that gives you some introduction mm. um we could use some of those slides even you know mm. um why soil health is important small water cycle um you know so so that gives mm. you uh, and this this is really uh a powered down presentation to the climate reality volunteers who who don't know much about anything in agriculture and so, so that's how I how I was leading them into the conversation. Mm -hmm. Jerry? Yeah, I think there's lots of things 
this feels very, very fruitful. Like there's many things we can do, many things we can try. Uh, we should try as soon as possible to interview a, one or two or three people who really of, are from these communities and know what's going on um, and could then steer us and say, sounds like a great idea, sounds like a terrible idea. You should talk to these two people and then uh, here's a way to look at it or whatever. But but we're, we are very much outside the communities we're trying to influence. And that doesn't work well unless you talk to people on the inside, like from the get go. Otherwise, we're baking in all our own assumptions and preconceptions. And we're saying, hey, look, we're here to help. We have great intentions, but we don't speak your language and we don't even know how to communicate with you. Yeah, and then when you are when we are speaking with uh, uh, religious uh, groups, we may have to weave in something about spirituality. And I will say that Kevin Doyle Jones's wife is uh, uh, an Episcopalian uh, minister who um, ran for higher office and almost was elected to like a major role in the church. Uh, sorry, Anglican, I think. Um, anyway, uh, that that Kevin is uh, Kevin is extremely accustomed to working through religious things. He is, of course, every now and then a bit thorny to talk to and uh, goes off on his own mission. But but he likely knows a couple of people we could talk to, and he um we, we can we can approach Kevin and say, hey, dude, uh, we're trying to learn more about green evangelicalism. Who should we talk to? And he will have he ought to have a couple names. I think Kevin is a great idea. Uh, he, he's very connected to to uh, uh, the communities of faith. I think is what you call them. Yep. Um, and and I think he would jump. The best thing we could do, Patty, is for you to talk with Kevin one on one. Uh, okay. Because by the time I get in there, it changes the chemistry and all of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, sure. Yeah. Okay. You know, I can reach out to Kevin. Yeah. That actually work really well. And I think yeah. he'd love this idea. Yeah. Okay. That would be a great thing to do. And we can do that whenever and report back okay. uh, through the Mattermost or email. And I think that'll be just just great. Do you do you foresee this being a more fruitful conversation if we were to talk face to face on Zoom or just an email conversation would be um, enough to get what you're looking for? Um, I think um, I, I'm thinking it might be really useful to come from you, Patty, because both Klaus and I will probably complicate matters with with Kevin. Uh, he would be happy to hear from you uh, if you can explain it over email and say answer here or happy to get on Zoom with you if that's faster or more mm -hmm. efficient. That mm -hmm. gives him the choice to, of, 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 of which mode works better. Mm -hmm. And uh, he doesn't do punctuation much, but he uh, but he, he he's got he's got he's connected. And, uh, he yep. will respond. OK, that, that should work fine. Do you have his email? Yeah, uh, yeah I do. Cool. Yeah. So let me just. Uh... Let me just give you the two files. So this yeah. is the lead and file here. Okay. And uh, and then this here is the uh, play outline file. Cool. So just suggest here's what we've come up with in this on our Monday call. You know. Um, if we to have a look through it, what we're what would be really helpful for us right now is to be in conversation with folks who are actually present in the communities we're trying to um, to reach and to work with. Uh, do you have any connections that would be helpful in um, us building these conversations and getting to know these communities a little better? Sounds great. What I would suggest is mm -hmm. if you tell them that we we release the file balloon with these with these two files with this file with the lead in file. And we had an instant feedback from two churches mm -hmm. uh, who want to incorporate this as a Sunday school play. Okay. And we developed, we, we asked ChatGPT to develop a script for a play uh, okay. based on these stories. And we sent that out. And they are, now we have two churches working on, you know, making, turning this into a Sunday school play. One okay. for little children and one for middle school children. Mm -hmm. um, so now we we thought, why don't we package this and just send it out to communities of faith, but we need to find the right way of saying things. So if you could help us uh, uh, structure this into a message that resonates, uh, and then if you could help us, you know, uh, uh, maybe with, with uh, 
uh, some contacts in the church community or in communities of faith who may be interested in helping us with this. Okay. Okay. So a little, a little more than, hey, who do you know? But hey, would you be willing to help us in um, creating the language that we could use to deliver this this message to a wider a wider group of churches? Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. We can do that. I will. Um, I will put that together today and uh, send that out today, and I'll keep you guys posted um, as I hear more. You don't want to be um, CC'd or BCC'd onto the email. Okay, I hear you. I got you. I can do that. All good. Yeah. All right. back. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I think yeah, that would be course. that would be a fun project. Yeah. Okay. So just to make sure I'm walking away today with clarity around my tasks. So putting together an intro, one page PDF. Um, after that will be after we talk with Kevin and get a clear sense of how to package this idea, or should we just make a rough draft of that to start? And, um, we fiddle with it as we talk with Kevin about language and accessibility of ideas. We can do it parallel. Okay. Okay. Cool. But there is, there is probably, um, because we're going to stay inside the communities of faith outreach here. You know? mm -hmm. So uh, I don't know if you want to bring in uh, uh, a reference to God or, um, you know, I mean, yeah. that may be the right thing to do because it, whether it's uh, all the Abrahamic religions refer to God, you know, whether mm -hmm. it's Jewish or Muslim or Christian. So that should be so. So uh, God has created, you know, life mm -hmm. uh, in this way, and you know, it's cherished and so really emotional language, you know, mm -hmm. that uh, connects us to the life inside the soil, which we're just not really aware of, and how important that really is, you know. And then these are God's creations that are really the foundation of all living things on land. Uh, mm -hmm. So this, this kind of uh, uh, emotional connection. But it feels to me like how much God to bring into our communications is something we will learn from people like Kevin and the people he connects us to. Mm -hmm. And also, it may be insincere coming from us in some sense. And also, it may be more easily integrated by the people who are de developing, writing up the plays and doing whatever else. Mm. So I'm, I'm a little leery of us adding in a lot of God, God did this in order to sound better and not then coming across as like, oh, but, you know, yeah. you don't, you don't really believe this. So why are you saying this? Right. So well, I don't know. Talk. And I, I, I want to learn how to walk that, that path. Yeah. yeah. But we can talk about creation. Yeah. 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 Um, it's sort of a neutral, um, you know, value neutral uh, term. I'm I'm curious. So having been, uh, I was, you know, I was a church goer until I was 16 and I could work and schedule myself, you know, on Sunday. So I didn't have to go to church anymore, but I had, I had that time for 16 years. So just uh, pulling from my experience and this was one Catholic church, right? This is not all churches and everyone's different and all these spaces I'm sure have a lot of differences, but um I'm my concern would be like how do we package this and deliver this idea in a way that commands doesn't command but invites um consideration that it's important right versus you know if if we have churches that are really um you know they're they have boots on the ground with the homeless in the community or the you know food kitchens and like the the human aspect you know there I mean in my experience there can be this disconnect between like oh like what does that have to do with me the soil you know that's but there's a starving you know a homeless human right over there I can help and that can feel a little more um like uh like a higher ROI in you know my time and energy helping like that human across the street so how how do we um and maybe that won't be an issue but I'm wondering how we can package this in a way that again it feels like relevant and a, a worthy use of their energy time and attention where the, it might already be directed in other spaces and places that have a more immediate and tangible return mm -hmm. return on investment if you will i that might not be applicable in a lot of situations but i, I could see that being a barrier in some spaces but i also mm -hmm. could be wrong there's an aspect of this that's very much about feeding people 
because mm. we're not looking at soil fertility just to hold water. We're looking at it to grow crops, to do whatever else. Um, there are probably many churches that are involved in community gardens, urban farming, other sorts of things. And, and there may be some insights that we can offer them that they ha haven't hit already, although mm. they may be very far advanced. Um, but I think there's some really nice uh, direct connections also too, if, if they're busy trying to help uh, people who are unhoused or, uh, or otherwise uh, mentally challenged. These are tasks that connect us to the earth again, that are meditative, that are healing, that are like, like that are that are work that give meaning. There's a whole bunch of other. There's another mm. set of, of of angles here as well that I think some of these uh, groups are probably already involved in. So it feels like there's a lot of close by uh, ways of doing that, and how we float something that is general enough to appeal to the groups that are doing very different work uh, and useful enough to be specific. I don't exactly know, but I would love to discover. I just put in a link, the Bionutrient Food uh, Association this is a group I've been working with. And their mission is to bring to the public's attention the link between soil health and nutrient quality and density of the food that comes out of the soil. Mm -hmm. So in other words, when you, when you uh, have vegetables coming out of soil that has been tilled and that's basically dead and they're using chemicals, uh, no synthetic nitrogen and mined phosphates and so on to feed that soil so it grows a crop, those nutrients, th those, those crops are nutrient deficient. Now, so, that, so today uh, uh, there are many crops, tomatoes, what have you, they're, they're basically, they're water, you know, whereas 30, 40 years ago, they would be just rich and full of uh, nutrient qualities. And a lot of the uh, health problems that we have is ca are caused by the nutrient deficiency of the food that we now eat. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and again, I mean, we, we have to be careful how complicated we make this, but you know, there could be, you could just put in one sentence that's saying these little things, these little microbes, you know, these little, this, this life inside the soil, not only, you know, does it, you know, take care of water and so on. It also determines the quality of the food that comes out of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Makes total sense. Um, quick, plug in, plug in. I've got, a, I've got a minute, but I, I wonder, um, just off, off the top of my head, I wonder if you could take an angle, um, Klaus, what you were just sharing around how, you know, this, this strikes me as a really like upstream solution to a lot of um, more downstream problems that may be consuming time and energy from these communities if they're trying to address community support at the level of, you know, XYZ feeding people, mental illness, um, lack of meaning, community um, connection, you know, this, this could be a way to market, not market, but um, suggest that this is like maybe one of the greatest bang for buck uses of energy time and attention and this brings support at a much higher level than some of these downstream now, now remember when, we, when we first talked about this when we brought in sort of five layers of explaining right so uh there is explaining this to a five-year-old mm -hmm. uh, to a 15-year-old or 10-year-old you know so you create age groups Mm -hmm. that you would explain this concept to so the level of complexity rises you know as uh, as we move deeper into uh you know a more advanced uh, person so how would you explain this to a 25 year old versus a five year old so in, uh, and this is where the website i think uh, can give you the flexibility you know to lay that out so here's for sunday schools here's here's uh kindergarten Yes, here is you know, middle school, here is uh, high school. Uh, here is adult uh, engagement. No. Um, and and so, so and so you know, to I mean, if we want to go that far, right? So you layer um, options you know, to add complexity into the discussion, um, and then the Sunday school teachers will determine themselves. Now the kids won't get this, you know, but. Uh, um, but the middle, the, high, the middle schoolers and the high schoolers will get it. You know? mm -hmm. Interesting. 
I wonder just, and this is, this could be way, way down the road, but I'm thinking if, if there are middle schools and even high schools who adopt this down the road, or if, if this play, this, whatever we're delivering gets adapted to a larger level, I wonder if there are ways we can build into this larger project, like community service opportunities, or maybe there's, you know, credit that, you know, students can earn by working in the communities, working at urban farms and things that like we, we can actually build pathways and trajectories with this core idea you know this it might not be the first quick book but the play being the the starting point and yeah. over time can build those layers of complexity and actually create community integration and involvement that would be amazing you know uh, i think we we need to have an infrastructure of uh, you know a few groups that bite into this mm -hmm. and like it and then keep them keep them in uh, uh, interested by adding you know, the complexity to it Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So years ago, I met a woman who worked at the Center for Eco Literacy in Oakland, and went and met with her at the office, and then we, we fell out of touch. But their whole thing was connecting with schools and helping schools grow their own food and then make their own lunches, sort of thing. Like like learn learn about all those connections. And they may have a bunch of resources. I, you know, I, from way back when, I have principles of ecology as one of their things. Rethinking the school lunch, a systems perspective, uh, smart by nature. There's a whole lot of stuff that they did long ago. Uh, I put them in my brain in 2003. So smart by nature, I put in my brain uh, in 2009. So they've been around for a while, and they may be interested, may not be. I don't know. Maybe it would be interesting to just knock on the door. Mm. And I think if, as soon as we have a couple of assets, like a, 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 a very simple website, uh, a play that, that somebody can download and go riff on and use, uh, a neo book for the, the, the other sort of sort of general factual stuff, as soon as we have a couple of things like that, um, we can kind of knock on doors and add resources and see. I, I would be very happy if someone in the community that shows up would like to take this over and just go make a big bigger thing out of it. Because I don't know that any one of us three wants to be full time working on a community for this this process or project. But I think we would all love to roll something downhill that gets some momentum and, and helps people and takes off. So so let's keep in mind to design this in a way that is easily sort of appropriated, but not taken over in the sense of other people can have a big effect on what it is we do and how how how, how it's manifest in the world. But it's not easily invaded and co-opted or corrupted because uh, that's a possibility. Yeah, I love that website. Mm -hmm. it's cool it's a I, I don't know why they don't have more attention why why there's like not more going on there it's very strange you know it's it's just it just all has a lot of moving parts i'm i'm i just inserted myself here in bend and they have a family kitchen and they're serving thirteen thousand meals a month to homeless wow. people. You know, I mean, that's, that's a lot and we're talking about bend right i mean bend yeah over, you know? And so, and and so they they want to build like a regional center, and so, so I just made myself available. And I'm meeting with their key driver um, because that's sort of down my alley is to design stuff like this. That sounds great. Yeah. Um, so ask, ask them if there's any people from local churches as part of that project, as part of the group, and see if you can't you know pull them into. I this will. I will. Patty, as soon as you have something, they are. There's Westside Church here in, in Bend. That's a, they have like over 6,000 members uh, who might be interested in doing something like this. Yeah, you bet. Yeah. Cool. Um, and uh, I'm curious, it'd be really helpful for me if um, could one of you send over to see and post a link to some kind of example, uh, just so I kind of have a, a sense of what I'm trying to create with this PDF, some kind of aesthetic that, uh, or even just how much um, text to graphic ratio on that first page. I'm having a hard time visualizing what um, what I'll be creating. It might it, I get the sense it might seem clear to you, but it's my first time doing something like what you're describing. So an example would be really helpful if you've got one or could send one. Yeah, to me it's clear as soon as I look at it. <laughs> yeah. Oh good. Yeah. Oh good. Cool. Um, if it, Klaus, if you can go look through your PDFs from other projects and other organizations, and if one of them, like if if one of them triggers you and you're like, oh yeah, that was a really clear invitation to something, and then just forward that to, to Patty and me, 
Um, I think you're getting more of them from this genre because you're so involved in it. And I will think about it as well from other projects. That'd be great. Um, yeah, it's a little bit like um, on the OGM list, you, you all saw that Marshall Kirkpatrick, who lives here in Portland, is just he did a guest issue for Azim Azar about uh, generative AI, but then he started a newsletter, um, the Sunflower Project or something like that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us who really, really think he's smart and like his work, we're like, yes, yes, this is good and forwarding it and, and doing other kinds of stuff. So we, we kind of want something viral like that, sort of na okay. naturally viral. Okay. There was, I'm, I'm still looking for something I'd seen, this was like on Pinterest or something a long time ago, there was this uh, climate circles you could host in your own community if you were, the, the whole tagline was, if you're getting, you know, feeling scared about climate change, do something about it, host a climate circle in your own community, and there was this whole, um, I can't find it, but it was, it was a whole framework of how to like they supplied the literature, they supplied the talking points. You just had to show up and start mm -hmm. the conversation. And it was something that could be deployed in communities without, you know, like in this example, Klaus having to, you know, fly out to each space and help teach or host. It was just something that was able to grow on its own. And I can't find it. Um, oh, shoot. I will keep looking though. Yeah. Yeah. Let's show those mm -hmm. in through the Mattermost uh, channel we've got. Okay. Um, and I'm, we're coming close to the end of our time. I just want to confirm that we are not able to meet together until August 7. Is that correct? July 31, you're also camping, Klaus? Um, let me get back to my calendar. Yeah, uh, thanks. Because <clears throat> I, I want us to set the next actual Zoom call so that we know when we're reconvening. Yeah, so August 7, yeah. August 7 is the first possible next one. Cool, that sounds great. So I'll, I'll post that on the channel so that people know not to show and and also to um where we are you know on the collaborations and all that so and feel free to chime in so for for what patty is working on now we need to also think about um uh putting in our logo uh cherry ogm logo or whatever and then the licensing you know open course but you know the the, the i forgot the name of the type of license we talked about. Right. Uh, I think yeah. it was CC0 maybe is, I think Pete's a fan of CC0 from Creative I Commons. I posted it actually on the channel. Oh, good. Okay. Um, the, uh, where was this thing? Oh, it's a Creative Commons license. Right. Creative Commons attribution license. Is that the same as CC0? I think it is. CCBY. Oh, CCBY. Okay. <clears throat> cool. Um, can one of you post a link to the Mattermost channel that this yes. is, I, I don't uh, thought um, I had access to that, but I'm not sure if I do. Another um, quick thought, I wonder if um, something that could be helpful for us to start getting a feel in the sense of how other uh, churches are talking about, or just the language that is being used in these communities, can we sign up our own emails to like get the newsletters from certain churches that may have um, like the green evangelical, evangelical websites, can we find their spaces and sign up for newsletters and just see like what what do they look like and kind of do some market research and and that way over the next few months we could be getting no reason not to yeah, i don't know i mean it'll crowd your inbox if you want to do that but... I, know. I thought about that like, oh, do I really want to? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 I, it's just a disaster to get through it yeah, I know. yeah. um some yeah. of the some of the email newsletters letters have archives <clears throat> so instead Ooh. of subscribing to the newsletter and getting the new ones just they'll let you see any all of them just find mm. one, find a couple that do that and just browse them. <clears throat> that's a great idea. I, that's a much better idea. Yeah, yeah. I'll do that. Uh, do, do sign up for the channel on the Collective Commons Party because I know I wanted to include you on some okay. message and I couldn't because you're not signed up. Ah. Yeah, I just put a link to it. Uh, can Thanks you get to so that? Me. Yep, yep. I'm opening that right now. Sweet. I... And then you have to go to that particular channel, which is the Neo book. Right. Oh, okay, I see that. I'm on, oh, yeah, I'm it's on the it. link I put in the chat. So. Yeah, yeah, I see Klaus's post from yesterday at 1037 okay. a.m. Yep, so I see that. Okay, got it. Never mind. I'm awesome. here. I'm good. Okay. That sounds great. And um, in Mattermost, if you start a message with at channel, um, you will force a, a, a push note to everybody who is on that channel. Okay. Um, for big news or whatever. So, you know, if, if I say, hey, we're going to postpone for a while, I will probably do a, an ad channel 
there. It's a little bit annoying because it sends an email that looks a little urgent, but that's good because then everybody who, who's cared enough to join the channel gets the news. Okay. Julio. And if we could get Pete to take those two files and combine them and then and then uh, create a file that is locked down. So so the um, I haven't looked through the plays that you shared, but they don't have dialogue yet, right? They have an outline of a play, but they're not actually finished plays for schools to share, or are they? No, I mean, this is a, a pretty much as far as we would go. Um, they, they, they have a sample dialogue in them. Right. Um, so, 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 so for example, it says, so a main character rep representing resilience and determination speaks with a firm and steadfast voice, showing a deep concern for the well-being of its companions. Lines express the urgency to find a solution. So those lines haven't been written yet. And and we shouldn't, or we're just not going to go further in it because right now it's actually not a play that you would hand out to kids to go to go perform, because they would have a hard time interpreting what that sentence, what that paragraph meant. No, this would go to the teacher. Um, right. So, so, this, so, but the teacher then has to create the the lines. Right. So we actually have two churches now developing lines. Okay. Um, and I'm thinking that it's not. I'm thinking that right now it's a pamphlet for how to run one of these things, and it's not really a play to produce as a document, as a play. Right. Um, that's just how I'm seeing those two things as different. And if anybody, including any of these volunteers who, who are writing lines, if they wanted to share back what the completed play looks like, and then we, you know, with attribution, whatever, we could be their publisher, yeah. kind of. They will. Yeah, yeah I, that's, that's the agreement. No, they, that could, that could totally work. That yeah. could totally work. But I, but I think until we actually have sort of dialogue, um, it doesn't smell like a play quite yet. It, it, right now, it smells like a class assignment. Yeah, that's basically what it is. Yeah. I, um, I wonder if we could offer um, options down, like down the road. Can we offer? Can we develop and offer um, a play that does have the fill, the complete dialogue, so that these teachers that are already laden with so many other responsibilities um, at that level don't have to, you know, take on another. Um, you know, however many hours to write the play themselves, but they could choose. And if, if they want to, maybe that is some kind of uh, experiential something yeah. they want to do with their classrooms, but we have the two options think, to offer. I, I totally agree. So on, on the website, for example, we could say, hey, here's the thing as an exercise and you would create your own dialogue. And then here's the thing as a finished play. And in fact, we might get five different churches who write different sets of dialogues and all five of those might be available for download and, and people could go look at them and see which one they like best. That, yeah. that, that would be terrific. We can make this also part of um, of the agreements, this licensing agreement, you know, so that we are providing you with all with this uh, in, uh, uh, starting point here. And in return, if you, you know, would, would uh, make, give us access to your finished product that would be uh, very much appreciated and we'll post it yeah. um one thing to think about a little bit on the side is uh if we're going to get a, a small web presence what would be a good url for that web presence um what what you know what semi-unique descriptive words could we use would it be soil happy soil.org would it be um, soil water and soul.org would it be i'm just just riffing out loud but if, if we come up with one that we all, that we, the three of us like, I will buy it, register it, and put up a simple site like within an hour. Uh, and then we can mess with that together. So um, what, what Chat GPT suggested here, I started at the choice and source of soil. And then Chat GPT put the title of the play, The Heart of the Earth. Is that a, that has to be taken? Is Heart of the Earth already taken? At least the, the dot com might be. I like it. Water and soil, water, soil, and soul. I, I, that that is, sounds that feels like a mouthful to say. I, I think I stammered halfway through. So it doesn't it doesn't roll easily. Yeah. Let me just check to see if the other one is Heart of the Earth. I I like something like simple and clean, like Happy Soil. Yeah, you that's know? kind of like, that's kind of yeah, what I'm thinking. Yeah, it's kind of cute. Yeah. So heart of the heart of the earth .org is available. Twelve bucks a year, that would work. If I take away the the heart of the earth .org is not available. When we should go look at see who who's got that one and what they're doing. 
uh, but the heart of the earth works fine. Uh, happysoil.org is available. What? Yeah. Happysoil.org, exact match, 12 bucks a year. I can buy that, no problem. Wow. Uh, Klaus, you're saying lead with water, but happy soil is also water. Does happy soil take us off topic or is it a good place to start? No, no, it's a good place to start. Now, then we will just explain the connection to water. Uh, I am I am buying the domain now and we'll send, we'll put, we'll, I will paste to the channel a link to the site and uh, see who wants to help build it. Cool. All right. I All like right. this. Awesome. I like this. Sounds great. Yeah. Makes me happy. With grief, we got more accomplished than I thought we would today. <laughs> Very good. And, and so we're, we're in asynchronous mode now until August 7th. Um, let's try to make little bits of progress back and forth. Let's talk a lot on the channel because that will generate other people's interest and they'll be able to see what's up. And this feels good. Yeah, thank you. Uh, right. Real quick, is it okay for me to, so um, my conversation with Kevin Doyle, is that to yeah. remain pretty strictly between us and I don't talk about that on the channel? What's um, the politic there that no, I need no. to be aware of? That's okay. No, no, okay. Approach, approach Kevin, it's Kevin Doyle Jones, yeah. Yep, yes. Um, uh, approach Kevin and then say, do you mind if I talk about our conversation or can I repost this to the to the Mattermost channel? He should be fine with that. Okay. He's, he's got no barriers mostly. Um, so, I, you know, he's not heavy on keeping everything private that I know okay. of. Should be fine, but I would just... Yeah, I'll ask anyway. Once you ping him, just ask, okay, if I talk about this. Okay, cool. Sounds good, guys. Thanks. Sure Very good. Thank you. Thank you That's so much. Fun. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Enjoy your camping. Enjoy your travels. Like, wow. Yeah. Yeah, have fun. Cool stuff. Bye-bye. <laughs> See you soon enough. Ciao. Bye.